Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you don't know who I am, I'm Ariana. I'm a first year pre-K teacher and I teach in a public school. So I wanted to reflect on my first half of teaching through the first two semesters. So I've made it from August to December and we will be starting the second half um, in a few days. So my first half was very interesting. It was a different environment for me as I went from a predominantly white school to a black school with um, integration of, is that how you say that? With um, Spanish speaking students. So I've never worked with Spanish speaking students in my life. So it was like a culture shock for me adjusting to working with students who spoke little to no English. So I did have one student who spoke English and Spanish. So at first, she didn't want to help me translate, but when we built a relationship, she was more willing to help me translate with my three students who didn't speak English. Then I had one student who spoke a teeny bit of English, and that student would just freak out on me at any given moment because even though that student spoke English, any time we did like the routine the first two, three days, I was like, okay, class, we're going to lunch. So... Everybody would line up, and then this student would just start crying because they were confused about what was going on. Even though they did speak a little bit of English, it was still new to them. So that student would cry, and it would set off that student's cousin, and they would both be crying. I'm just like, it's okay. And I would, like, hug them and try to comfort them, but they didn't know what I was saying. And then I would try to get the other students to come over who spoke English to, like, comfort them. And she was like, I don't know you. I don't speak Spanish. That's what that student told me. I do not speak Spanish. So, and I don't like to use that student as much. Now, I'm learning Spanish, so next year I will be able to better communicate with my students and my parents because I hate waiting on a translator to come because it takes forever for them to get there. So, I am learning Spanish to better myself so I will be able to speak Spanish next year. So, I know about this much Spanish and I can read notes from parents and I can write notes to parents. So, that's where I'm at with my Spanish speaking. But that was new to me. Now all my students have moved along great. And I think it was better that I didn't know Spanish. They were forced to learn English. But it does help knowing Spanish to communicate with the parents. So they are now all speaking basic English like IPP, me thirsty, he hit me, and so on. So it is better now. They are learning. They know about 10 letters a piece, which is good because we've covered about maybe 12 or 13 letters and they know most of the numbers we cover. Letter sounds is different with them, so it's harder to get them to remember letter sounds, but I'm not worried about it because they will pick it up in kindergarten. So kinder, pre-K, we're just introducing it to them, giving them a foundation. Whew. What else happened this year? We went on our first Field trip, and oh my goodness, the entire time, I was freaking out in the back of my mind. I didn't want to lose anybody. We went to a museum. Everybody had partners. And I was like, please do not let your partner hands go. And then we went to see dinosaurs. So they would get excited. They would lose their partner. They were here, here, here. And I'm trying to keep up with everybody. So I did not enjoy my time at the field trip. And it was like towards the end that I sort of kind of relaxed. We was on the bus. That's when I relaxed. When everybody was on the bus sleeping, I relaxed then. Other than that, my was, guard was on high. People were kidnapping kids. I'm out here with all these kids. But I'm glad I had maybe four to five parent volunteers to come along. I had my student teacher to come along, and I had my assistant. Then we had the behavior specialist from the school to come on. The bus driver was one of my students' grandparents. So there was a lot of hands-on help, so... It was fine. They were fine. We all went in big safe. So after we saw the dinosaurs, we went down to the park, and my anxiety shot through the roof. It is a park, but it was gated in, so everybody made it back safely. But there were other students on the playground, so. Woo. And then while we were there, a student got loose from, um, they had some mental students in the building, and one got loose. I don't mean to say it like that, but... He had a breakdown from all the people and all the things around him and just took off running and screaming through the um 
through the museum, down to the museum, and this student was running back and forth, screaming, and then, um, the behavior specialist from school walked up, and she's like, keep your kids close, there's a student on the loose, and that's how she said it to me, so, I'm like, oh my goodness, they're gonna get, I'm just freaking out, because I take everything 10 times worse than it's supposed to be, so I'm like, okay, kids, stay together, and I just gathered all my kids, and just took them to the other side of the museum, and it was fine, they calmed the student down, took him outside, and it was fine, and it was just a new experience for everybody. And my kids are just like, they didn't know what was going on. I'm freaking out. And they're fine. They're like, Miss Brown, look, it's a big fish. And they're right. It was a big fish. So we just looked at the big fishes. What else happened this year? Um, My students start tested at the beginning of the year just to see where they were. And my person was like, it's fine. And it's not a reflection of what you're teaching. It's like just... A baseline to see where you were because we took the test like two three weeks after we've been in school then we took it again and my scores improved treatment like a lot so i'm like i am teaching them something they're picking up something so i'm ready to see where their scores are after um we come back from christmas where it should probably drop a bit because we haven't been in school for two weeks and then three weeks back in school we're gonna take another test but other than that testing pre-k students is stressful teaching them how to use the mouse you have to keep your headphones on you have to listen to what the lady's saying what did she say? Like, I can't help you. Like, it is a lot. But now they're taking a computer class. They learn how to work a mouse. So they rocked the test better the second time. They're going to do even better the third and the fourth time. And it is good to have a principal that is very supportive of, like, everything. And able to, like, anytime you need to talk, you can go to her office and talk. Like, at that moment. If she's on campus. But, yes. And she asked me maybe two or three months ago, like, what, how was I feeling? Like, what was I at? And I was probably, like, at a five or a six. And she's like, if you ever get to a seven, like, come back and talk to me. But I was just always stressing, like, there is not enough time in a day to get absolutely everything done. And I've learned you're never going to get everything done that's on your lesson plan the way it's supposed to go because life happens. pre cares are... Like, you cannot base anything on a four-year-old because it's never going to go the way you plan it to go. Like, I got all this excited for all these new standards that I have to put out. And I know it's not going to go the way I want it to go. And I have to realize, it's fine. We can do it tomorrow. Oh, we can do it next week. Or I just take this activity and save it for another time when there's this nice open space. But everything is not going to always go A, B, C, D like you want it to. So, I always have a backup plan always have a backup plan so yeah i learned to have a backup plan i learned to not stress i'm not the type of person to have a planner and write it all down i have a planner i bought it i want to use it it is a happy planner and i try to use my happy planner i write in it but it is hard opening up a planner and having everything written down that's not gonna go the way i want it to go having a curriculum to follow by and i try to like the curriculum book is humongous so i try to write everything from my curriculum book to my planner but i just go with the flow and i just do what i would do because mm, it'd be it's on the lesson plan so i just try to follow the lesson plan and do what i do and i did set up a few classroom um i always go by your lesson plan because you never know when the principal's gonna walk in my principal observed me the day I set up for the Polar Express. And was the Polar Express in my lesson plan? Absolutely not. So when I found out she was coming, I quickly like found the stuff that was on the lesson plan to do that day. And I still had my plans for my Polar Express. And I ran that like in a mixture with that. Because my plan was to let them enjoy the Polar Express day. But we also had to do a teaching moment so my principal could observe me. And my observation... My observation went, I have no idea because it was right before Christmas break. So hopefully I get results when we get back. But my first observation was fine. I wasn't too nervous. I was like, I've done this before. It is fine. She just want to see what I'm doing. This can help me grow. Like, how can you grow if you don't have people giving you advice? So I have the best assistant in the world. She was able to give me um tips on like what her few observations was what the principal was looking for because my assistant's been at the school for five years as a assistant teacher and before that she did other things around the school 
but she was able to give me tips and tricks on like how to do well in my observation and I feel like we blew it out the water but we will know when we get our results back but she did say she was only calling people to her office who she really needed to talk to and I asked her she, she needed to talk to me and she said she didn't see anything out the way that she needed to talk to me about so hopefully that means I get good ratings back from my observation but I'm enjoying being a first year teacher and there's nothing I would change about it. Like I love absolutely everything about it and you don't know something until you try it. So I've tested things and I found out they didn't work the way I wanted them to. So I just took that, threw it out the window and tried something new. I talked to my mentor. She's awesome. She is a kindergarten teacher down the hall. I also have an off-campus mentor that was a pre-K teacher for 25 plus years. So they're both awesome in helping me with whatever I need. And the lady who's over the student teachers for the high school is my aunt. So whenever she's on campus, she comes through, visits, gives tips here and there. So I have like a very supportive community around me. My soup, my team teacher is amazing. So whenever I need something, she's there. So I have like a really supportive team. I think that's like what makes or breaks a first year teacher. The support you have behind you, like you need to have like teachers supporting you in the school, family that's supporting you, friends that are supporting you. Like, if I didn't have the support system I have now, I don't think I would have made it this far because I'm not gonna lie, it is stressful at times in the days I just wanna just yell like, ah, everybody sit down, <laughs> don't talk, don't move, like freeze. But you cannot do that. And you have to learn to use your words and teach them to use their words because they're gonna cry about small stuff because they don't know how to express themselves. But that's what I'm there for, to teach them how to express my words. So I can't go in there screaming and yelling, laying on the ground, kicking. They would never learn how to express their words and become productive human beings if it wasn't for teachers all over the world. But my first year has been great. I did have a moment in the year with a student. Now, I'm not allowed. I don't think you're allowed to discuss it, but this student had a rough, like, rough beginning but my student now is in a much better place. And I'm glad for the workers at the school to help us to help that student get into a better place. And I can sleep better at night not having to worry about what that student is doing at home. Like, how is that student surviving? So, amazing. There's stuff they don't tell you in school. And there's stuff you're going to find out about. And they don't tell you. They do not tell you how to run your first day of school. They do not tell you about all these different curriculums. Like, when I was in school, we focused on this one, focused on this one curriculum, and it's just hard learning new curriculums and trying to implement all the information you need to implement. And I'm learning that I will not, like, put all these skills in these kids because they're not ready for it. And I feel like the curriculum moves faster, but I've learned to take what I need and use it and build on to what we need to build on to. But that is all I have for today. And my advice to you is don't quit until December. If you make it to December, you can make it the rest of the year because I promise, like once you make it up the hill, it's, you're rolling right back down the hill. There is nothing to it. Once you make it up the hill, just like riding a bike to the top of the hill, once you're there, it's just rolling. I promise. Okay, I can't promise you that, but that's what I've been told. But I made it up the hill. I'm excited to go back on Monday. And I feel like I'm just going to roll down the hill because I miss my students. And I said I wanted to move up to kindergarten with my students because I miss them so much. But I love pre-K too much. Even though I do want to teach kindergarten eventually, I will not be moving up to kindergarten next year. Unless my principal will be like, you're going to kindergarten. But other than that, I am staying in pre-K. I love pre-K. Pre-K is where my heart is. And I'm excited to go back. That's why I'm buying all this stuff because this is my, like, home. But that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. Hopefully, there will be new videos coming out soon. But that is all. Bye.